Ladies and gentlemen, there are three kinds of greats in the world. That's the great, the near great, and the ingrate. Tonight, I have the greatest. Ladies and gentlemen, the world's heavyweight champion, Muhammad Ali. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I, I don't want to take up too much. Thank you. I'm so happy. I'm so flattered to see so many followers, so many fans here on this rock and roll stage. I expect these cheers when I'm boxing because I know I'm the greatest. Now, I'm happy. Listen, thank you so much. Thank you for the cheers and the claps. And God bless all of you. But as you know, we are here in support of a boxing friend of mine who's been unjustly imprisoned now for nine years of his life. And I'm so glad to see you all with the cause because you have the connection and the complexion to get the protection. Also, Reuben Hurricane Carter, I've looked into the case. Everybody's looked into it. We have governors behind him mayors behind him, movie stars, and what's so surprising and what made me look into the case, just about 75% of the world famous national and known people are white. And I said, if this man is black and he supposedly killed two white people, I'm sure they're not going to put their lives on the spot, lives on the spot back in a murderer. The men who said that he was guilty for killing the people that got him rap later came back and said that he wasn't guilty. Somebody else here tonight can tell you more about it, but everything shows that the man is innocent. He at least deserves a retrial, but the people who judge the man are so shamed. Let me finish. Some of you who might not know what's happening, I'm going to give you a comparison. A man is married. He's got a girl pregnant. He tells the girl to kill the baby to get an abortion because he don't want to get caught. He don't want his wife to find out that he made a mistake or what have you. So to hide his shame, he kills the baby. Well, these people, these judges and the people who put the man in jail are causing a great injustice to be born. And they want to kill it and not reveal it. To, they don't want the people to know that they made a mistake. They're too proud to admit their guilt. So, so they just want to kill the man, bury him. And we can't stand by and let it be done. Regardless of being black, brown, red, yellow, white. You watch a movie and you see a cowboy who's innocent. And they're getting ready to hang him. And the sheriff rode to the next city to get help. He comes back with help. He comes back with evidence just before they pull the rope and they all say, ain't that terrible? We almost hung in as a man. Well, here we are in 1975, the moon age, and all evidence show that this is a little water gate. This is a miniature water gate. And they don't want to admit that they're wrong, so we want you all to get behind it. And all here who are for the newspaper writers, for the people who are here from the judge's office, to see how many people are supporting this man. How many of you are behind the man just getting a retrial? Let me hear your voices. That's good. Thank you.
Thank you very much, champ. Uh, champ, you have a telephone call. I don't know who's on the other end, but you do have a telephone call, and I've been holding it for you, so why don't you just say hello? I hope the audience can hear it. Why don't you just say hello? Hello, who's, who's speaking? This is Ruben Hurricane Carter. Hey, man! Do you hear that, that hand, Ruben? Okay, could everybody, could it, thank you. Could everybody be quiet so we can hear him talk? Thank you. I'm so happy and so joyful to hear so many of you behind the brother. Let's let him talk. What do you want to say? I want to say this before you talk. You are really great. To be in a jail nine years away from your daughter, just everybody here put yourself in his shoes, away from society, and still clean, still have dignity, still fight in your own case. All that you see here, Rupert Hurricane Carter has done it from inside the bars. Finding people, making calls, writing letters. He's, he's the promoter of all of this. And I don't think a guilty man would have that much nerve, our guts. Okay, Ruben, say a word or two. Let the people hear you. Now we got the whole place is jam-packed, man. It looks like I'm getting ready to fight somebody. I don't know. And it's hard. I don't, it's just hard for me to believe that these people, it's just hard to believe that Bob Dylan is this big. It's just hard to believe. Man, I'm the one. Bob Dylan ain't that big. I've never heard of a... Listen, the word Bob Dylan, people kept telling me, who's Bob Dylan? You go, I said, Bob Dylan, you know, color folks dance a little different from y'all, and we, the music is a little different. I didn't know him too much into the night, but I have a lot of respect for this man. All of you girls, you came to see Bob Dylan more than me? Okay, Ruben, let's Ruben Hurricane Carter. Say something, Ruben. Muhammad? Yes, sir. More on a serious note, my brother Bob Dylan once wrote a song that said, walk upside down in handcuffs. I throw up my legs and kick them off. I stand up and say, all right, that's enough. Now what else can you show? Ruben, I want to ask you one more question. Do you promise me, do you promise me if we do all we can to get you out of jail, you're not going to try to fight for my title, are you? Muhammad, speaking from prison, speaking from deep down in the bowels of the state prison of New Jersey, the fact that I'm speaking to you and to the many other brothers and sisters who are sitting right there in that audience, that's revolutionary indeed. That is revolutionary. And the fact, and the Ruben, Ruben, I want to say your pretty daughter's here. Come here, darling. Your daughter's here, and say something to your father. Daddy, I love you, man. I love you too, baby. Let me tell you something. Muhammad, what has kept me going in nine years, while everybody else, it seems, had bailed out on me, is my beautiful wife and daughter. They were strong enough to be strong as they had to be to let me be strong as I had to be. And I love them and you and Miss Carolyn Kelly and George Lewis and Bob Dylan and Joan Baez and all the rest of you beautiful people out there. But I knew you was coming, see? I knew you was coming. In 1966, the country was proliferating with racial strife riots in the streets but i knew that if i just remained alive that if i kept myself well i knew that if my brothers and sisters out there black white blue green yellow rich poor and whatever i knew if they just keep thinking just keep on thinking keep on loving themselves keep on respecting themselves and i knew they was going to come to my rescue and tonight here you are and i love you all madly yes i do We have a Mr. Saper, a Mr. Saper here, brother, 
criminal judge from New Orleans. We want him to say a word or two. Thank you very much, champ. I visited with uh, Reuben today, and there's just a couple of things that I'd like to bring to your attention. I don't guess a lot of people know that for the last nine years, Reuben's been living in a cell that's approximately eight by five. Now, I came down from New Orleans, and I've been reading about it in the newspaper. I understand that the governor picked his hand-picked man to investigate the matter, to decide whether or not executive clemency should be given to Reuben so that he could be here with us tonight until he receives his trial and be home for Christmas. Well, I arrived here in New York today. Willie Pastrana, one of the ex light heavyweight champions of the world is here with me tonight, a great friend of the champ, Muhammad Ali is. We went over to prison and Reuben's not home. He's not with his family. He's still over there and our mission is to try to get him out of there. I want to say, and I don't want any of us to lose sight of it, and I talked to, to Ruben today, and he's not looking for any gifts because he was a fighter and he won them all right in the ring and he won them all big. He wants his day in court and he wants justice, and that's what it's all supposed to be about. There'll be seven judges that are going to hear the matter. And we know, and we hope, and we pray with the democratic system, these judges have never heard the matter before, and they have a recommendation to hear it. And I talked to Reuben today, and that's all he wants. When it's heard, there's no doubt in his mind that he will be completely exonerated. He'll be home with us. The last thing I want to say, because I know it's a, a great show and I don't want to bore anybody. I came here to make some friends tonight, not enemies. But I want to say this. We are not going to quit the fight. We're here tonight to invite all of y'all to what we hope will be a next superstar production in New Orleans, Louisiana. New Orleans has a Superdome, it's brand new, it's a $180 million facility, and I'm not here trying to, tell, to sell it to you. I only want everybody to know that we in the Deep South are interested in justice, we're interested in Reuben Hurricane Carter's cause, and if we can't get it done here through the tremendous effort that you've given by being here tonight, we're going to go to New Orleans and continue the job. I think if we can just keep one thing in mind, and I'm trying to relate to this crowd, and I think the only way I can really relate to you is by something that I heard a black artist say the other night when I was in a nightclub in New Orleans. He said, when you hear the national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner, it takes the black keys and the white keys to get it done. Thanks a lot. Ladies and gentlemen, just before we leave the stage, we're going to leave in just a moment. I'd like to introduce Mrs. Carter, Mrs. Hurricane Carter. You met his daughter. Also, a very, very fine gentleman from East Orange, New Jersey. He's the mayor of East Orange. He's been our spokesman for the New Jersey Defense Committee for Carter, Mayor William Hart. And the one lady that really makes all of us tick in New Jersey and gets us hopping, gets us out of bed all hours of the morning, Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Carolyn Kelly, the Executive Director of the New Jersey Defense Committee. She's a winner, believe me. <laughs> Champ, we want to thank you very much. Once again, let's hear it for everybody that was involved tonight. Another big round of applause for the greatest, Muhammad Ali. <laughs> On behalf of all of us, thank you very much. Enjoy the show. Peace. Yeah, I want to follow that. Muhammad Ali. My other hero. I got one more hero.
Yeah, well, you're going to wait for him. How about that shit? <laughs> <laughs>